This episode of the QA is brought to you by Rainier Arms and UN12 Magazine. Good end of the month to you. It is the end of the month, which means it is time for the QA. It is the April 2020 edition of the QA for Guns and Tactics. My name is Dave Tim. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes with me checking out this video. I decided to change it up a little bit. Like many of you around the country, we are going through some weird and just crazy crappy times. Several of you are in shelter in place orders by your various states or home quarantine or you know limited travel or whatever it might be in Minnesota we have the a similar thing going on too. So we're allowed to be outside. I'm practicing social distancing. I'm 6 feet away from my camera, maybe more. And then there's obviously no one else around me, but I just I wanted to get outside and kind of do this episode. So I hope all of you are healthy. I hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, it's midday, but it's morning for me. I just woke up a little bit ago, so I just wanted to get outside, enjoy some coffee, and do the QA with you guys, and uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Mm. Someday I'll share a coffee. I'm kind of a foo-foo coffee drinker, so someday I'll share my recipe for uh, my morning Marchino Delight. But that's an off topic. If you want to see your question get on the show, you can certainly leave a comment in the comment section below. But the best way, the absolute best way to get your question on the show is to email me at the email address shown below. It is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. When you send me an email, it not just sends e me an email, it actually sends an email to my boss. So it shows my boss that we're actually getting views and we're actually having questions coming in. So it really helps come performance review time for this guy. So send your questions to that email address right there, the QA at gunsandtactics.com. That is the best way to get it on the show. And then we can get your questions on the show. The more questions we get on the show, the more questions we answer on the show, the bigger the show gets. And hopefully we can do cooler and bigger and better things. Thanks. So uh, real quick, before we get rocking and rolling, um, kind of want to give you guys an update we are at like 46 and a half thousand subscribers on our youtube channel and if you haven't heard we are going to be starting our 50k giveaway uh, we have rainier arms who we've already been in talks with they sponsor the qa so i do appreciate them for doing that but they're also going to be sponsoring the 50k giveaway which is going to be pretty awesome uh, some of the prizes that we're talking about are pretty cool i'm pretty excited about it so we're going to be rolling out the 50k giveaway video here shortly and kind of going over what we need people to do and how we're going to also logistically keep track of that and pick the winners and stuff so you obviously have to be a subscriber you're probably gonna to have to sign up on the webpage gunsandtactics.com that'll be the official entry for the sweepstakes and then we're going to start to give away our prizes and we'll have a video about that as well but i'm really excited if we can get to 50k i'm anticipating we're going to do that this summer so uh, it's April now, maybe by, you know, June-ish. So we'll see. We'll just see how it goes. And then obviously after that, my goal is 100. That's what I got my sights on. So I need your help to do that. Uh, now, I did get several messages, kind of some quick questions. So if your message or your question does not get to the show, it's probably because I replied to you. If it was just a short email like, hey, A or B, and I was able to answer that quickly, and it's something that we've probably already covered. I did cover a lot of those. But real quick, with uh, uh, from the comment section, Nathan did a, what are your thoughts on J-Frames? I've picked one up and particularly excited. Uh, yeah, J-Frame is a proven, proven revolver. It's a, a great handgun. So I have zero issues recommending a J-Frame for, you know, a carry gun. Uh, obviously carry some sort of a way to reload it quickly and practice with that because the downside with a revolver in general is that they have limited capacity and obviously the slower to load compared to just a magazine that can hold a higher amount of rounds. So that's just, you know, nature of the beast. But practice with it. They're great guns. They're proven. They've been around for a long, long time. And then I got a bunch of other comments. I always do love reading the comments. I try to read uh, or respond to every comment. Sometimes I do miss one. Uh, however, there was one guy who accused a guy named Tim's who cleaned out the shelves at his Walmart and I just refused to respond to that. <laughs> so anyways, um, otherwise, what else do we have coming up? And then we're going to get into the questions. Uh, I do have a project that's going to be different from what we've typically done at Guns and Tactics since I've been on the team. And it's a video series that is going to be a project. And I've hinted at it. If you follow us on Instagram and Facebook, I posted one of the parts uh, that I received for that. And uh, I got a couple of guesses, but no one guessed it. Now there's a few of you that know what it is, but it's gonna be a little different for us. And the goal of that, we're not changing directions, okay? We're still gonna be focused on firearms and things like that. Uh, but this is a relatable topic. 
And a lot of people that I found that are into firearms are also into these, and I've wanted one for a long time, and there's a lot of uses that I can use this firearms related, so it's gonna kind of be my uh, build up series. And I'm learning a ton about it along the way, and that's kind of what motivated me to start this project. So uh, those will be rolling out probably end of May, June. It'll be a, a video series. It'll kind of be its own little segment, if you will. And mainly what I wanted to do is just share the knowledge that I've learned because I was kind of a noob when it comes to this particular topic that I've done a ton of research. So I'm gonna share with you some of my resources, share with you some of my mods along the way and how I'm doing things. And uh, you know, hopefully you like it. So if you wanna guess on what that is, you can go ahead and sound off in the comments below. And if you're looking for a clue, check out our Facebook and Instagram feeds. So here we go. We have, uh, aside from Nathan's comment on YouTube, you know, as far as emailed questions, we have nine. But one more thing before we get to that. Uh, I do also really appreciate your suggestions. So C Fair NH, he did the AR, he was a, another vote for the AR spare parts video. So you can find that up in the card right here on YouTube. Otherwise, if you were on another platform or if you're on the Facebook, go ahead and search on our webpage for spare parts. And you should find the article there with the video. But I love taking your suggestions and I always want to do videos based on what you guys actually want to watch. So that's what I want to do. And hopefully that helps you guys get the word out and subscribe and all that stuff too. Because, you know, we do want to grow and that's uh, a big part of it. So let's get right to it. Question number one is from Derek. Really enjoy the QA. What is your favorite company for AR gunsmithing and armor work? Things like pinning, muzzle devices, threading barrels, etc. cetera. Um, me, I do my own work. I own a small gun shop on the side. I do armor work. Uh, AR specific is really my specialty. I don't work on your grandpa's deer rifle. I don't work on your great uncle's duck shot shotgun. Um, I you know, really kind of stay in my lane. Law enforcement, defensive type arms, competition stuff. Uh, I, you know, I kind of stay in my lane when it comes to that. So I am my own gun shop. Uh, I have a lathe, but I don't thread on it. So I do farm out my barrel threading to a couple of shops and they do phenomenal work. Um, my pin and welding, you know, it's basically what I tell people. It's, it's work, you know, quality. It's not gonna be like the prettiest of button rosebud weld, but it's gonna be a weld that holds and I cover it with an epoxy paint so it doesn't rust uh, because I have seen a lot of bare welds start to rust over time uh, just from hard use. So yeah, I have a, a milling machine. So I precisely mill, use my mill to drill the holes so I get proper depth. I use a DRO, for, I don't know. That's, I do all my own AR work, so I am my favorite shop. Uh, usually even when I get a factory gun, I'll take it apart and make sure it's put together correctly because sadly there's a lot of times that I get guns from the factory that are not put together correctly. They are not torqued to proper spec. They lack thread locker in certain areas where they should have thread locker. They don't have anises or molly grease in certain areas. So I do my own work. Number two from Sam. I live in a band state, cannot have a flash hider. Can you provide guidance for a comp that has the least amount of flash and blast? Not concerned about maximizing recoil. The two that he's looking at are the battle comp and the BCM gunfighter, your thoughts. Um, I've ran both. Uh, I ran the battle comp when that was new and I actually had a couple issues with it. I actually bulged one early on. They said they had some bad heat treating or whatever. So I don't hold that against them. I mean, growing pains, this was really early on. They made it right. They sent me out a couple new ones. Uh, but the battle comp was definitely more comp-like than, you know, I would expect it to be. So I've also then moved uh, a few guns to the BCM gunfighter. And quite frankly, they're not much more obnoxious than an A2, but I do find them a little bit more effective. So between those two, I like them both. Just keep in mind that the battle comp is probably a little bit more effective as a comp, but then it has a little bit more percussion. Whereas the BCM is trying to be as most flash hider as it can be without being a flash hider. I really like the BCM. I wouldn't hesitate to go with that. So that would be my, my input there. Question number three is from Daryl. I'm new to the AR world when it comes to changing parts. I bought a BCG from SRC. I don't know what SRC is. I apologize if that's a company or a brand. I'm not super. Oh, maybe it's Sharps Rifle Company. Now I remember. See, this is why I have my coffee. Uh, the staking was questionable. Should I restake it or just get another one? If everything else looks good on it, everything else looks like it's in spec, the rings look okay, the machining looks good, uh, you can certainly verify the torque on the fasteners and then just restake. I see a lot of carriers come through the shop uh, from guns that come in for transfer or guns that come in, whatever. There's a lot of carriers out there that uh, do not have 
good staked keys in my opinion. So I just, I stake a lot of stuff. I use a Moax tool. I wouldn't hesitate just to stake it and drive on if everything else looks good. Number four, this is from Dom. Subscribe to your channel. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Welcome aboard. And I enjoyed watching. I really enjoyed watching you, your Ascend build. Can you send me a list, brand, and model? Uh, so the video he's talking about is the build I did from the Ascend receiver set. It was my three-gun rifle. And uh, I did send him an email back. So here's my question then for you. So he has the info. I kind of did a detailed of like the barrel and all that other stuff. Um, I, I don't know. Is that helpful information for you guys? Do you guys want me to do like these detailed like this is this and this screw I got from Fastenal and I don't know if we need to get that detailed, but like how detailed do you guys want? Like how much information do you like and how much information do you want? I did a vi in that one, I kind of went over the major components, like the stock is from here, the barrels from here, that kind of thing. But if you guys are looking for more info on build breakdowns or anything like that, you know, let me know. I would, uh, I certainly would appreciate your feedback and your input because again, I do want to make content that you want to watch, but that video of the Ascend one that I carted to earlier, uh, and by the way, I got to say that, that, that gun just shoots. It's just a smooth, flat shooter. So it, yeah, good stuff. I do like it. And plus the Ascend receiver sets are beauties. They're works of art. And I know they're tough to get right now, but they're beautiful. Sorry. This is question number five. This is from Taylor. Uh, Taylor has asked questions before, so Taylor, good to see you again. Getting an upgraded scope for my dual three gun and defense AR, and I need a mount. Currently have a cantilever, a budget cantilever 1.4, and want something a little higher. He has to crunch down more than he'd like. Red docks are typically at his lower third, so that means they sit up a little higher. What is your recommendation? 157, 17, 193. Also, uh, good mounts recommendation. So, uh, everybody's honestly a little bit different, uh, and there's pros and cons to when you start to raise that mount up. So traditional is like a 1.5-ish. That's kind of your very common AR height. Then we have a little bit higher, and we have the 193s, and now there's even a company that's doing like a two-something uh, because maximum upright height, you know, type thing. So here's the thing. When you raise it up, when you have that higher, that 193 or higher mount, you can be a little bit more upright when you're shooting the gun, standing, maybe kneeling, things like that. The downside is, is that what I found for me is that when I get into some of these awkward shooting positions like prone or shooting underneath things or around barricades, or if I have to like use something to brace off of or whatever, and it's kind of like prone-like uh, ergonomics, having the scope up higher is a little bit more uncomfortable for me than if it was a little bit lower. So I do have a couple of guns that have 193s and I like them. Uh, however, that, that con, you know, is there as far as like an upright, it's nice and great, whatever. But most of my stuff still has standard, you know, 1.5 inch heights, just because I still find that I can, you know, be relatively upright with it. I just get, you know, a little bit different of a, uh, a chin versus a cheek weld to kind of find that spot that works for me. And also I don't generally run a lot of stocks anymore that have the big cheek welds. Uh, I just find that they, they forced my face to be in a spot that I didn't necessarily want them to be in, so I just run... My favorite stock right now is the Mo SL, and that just allows me to put my face on the stock where I want to put it. But that's what I kind of run, but uh, if you want to, I would recommend trying to go to a shop that maybe has a couple different things on display or go to a match or a class where people have different height mounts and you can kind of get a feel for what works for you. Because the last thing you want to be doing is, is hunting for your scope and things like that. That kind of stinks under time at a match. Now, as far as quality mounts, Man, right now, it's a good time to be a buyer. We have so many good options. Uh, Midwest Industries makes great mounts. Uh, Geisley makes great mounts. JP makes great mounts. Badger's coming out with stuff. We have Spur, American Defense. Uh, Aero Precision uh, is doing some really good stuff, and they're kind of more budget-friendly. So those are probably my top ones. If you were to look through my optic mounts, what I have the most of, I have Midwest Industries, JP, Geisley, those are like my top three. I might have a few other oddballs or whatever, but generally the main main three are those companies right there. And then obviously you have to pick if you want a QD or not. I've used to get everything QD, and now I'm kind of getting to the point where with offset sights and offset red dots and things like that, I can't really think of times that I'm going to need to hastily take this off. So I just get quality bolt-on uh, scope mounts. So I do have a, a video coming up where we're going to be doing a patrol rifle build-up. I'm hoping that this works out here pretty soon, so looking forward to that. 
All right, before we get into our next question, I do have to give a shout out to Rainier Arms. Now, first things first, if you guys like to buy stuff, I highly recommend the Rainier Arms Apex Club for a low price of $99.99. So just under hundred bucks, you get free ground shipping and they're shipping out of their Kansas warehouse now for most of their stuff. So you get it super fast on either side of the country and free ground shipping, discount, exclusive access. The Rainier Arms Apex Club is a great deal. However, I also am giving away a couple of issues of UN12 Magazine. Now, I really do like magazines. Uh, there's still something nostalgic about reading a magazine for me, although I just don't read a ton of magazines. But one magazine that I always look forward to getting is UN12. And partly, is just it is so impressive. Now, it's not like your typical monthly, go to your big box store, get it for three bucks. Uh, MSRP is $12.95. You can get them through Rainier Arms. They do have a digital version, but they're also working on a uh, subscription type service too. But the quality, I mean, and I'll show you guys some details, but the paper, really high quality paper, really high quality uh, printing. The photos are great. The articles are great. They use only the best authors. Heck, they even published an article for me in there once. So uh, you know that it's gonna be good stuff. But I just really like this magazine. Plus they give you a patch every episode, or every episode, every issue gets its own patch. Uh, so UN12 Magazine, thank you very much for your help. I'll be sending out a couple of issues of this. And yeah, I just, if you're looking for a good quality gun magazine with a lot of relevant content that are, is written by true industry professionals, guys that are you know, really knowledgeable in their particular field, been there, done that type guys, uh, highly recommend UN12. So check this out, UN12 Magazine, good stuff. Back to the show, this one is number six. I wanna know the combination of a BCM Mark II upper with an Aero Precision Gen 2 lower. Good, and I should have no problem. This is from Frankie from Puerto Rico. Yeah, should have no problem. Assuming both are in spec, which those are both reputable companies, and that Mark II upper, uh, I really do like. I haven't built anything up with it yet since my first look video right about there. We'll put a card up, but I, it looks like a really solid upper, and then Aero, you know, they make a ton of uppers for a lot of other people too, if you didn't realize that. So number seven is from Tom. I've been looking at the LaRue Tactical Ultimate AR-15 upper kit. They go for about $800, and I was curious if you had any reviews unable, uh, that I'm unable to find in regards to LaRue's current lineup. Would you consider doing a review on this kit as it would really appeal to a lot of home builders? I would love to do a review if they wanted to send me something, sure. Unfortunately, I don't have this huge unlimited budget where I can just go buy all this stuff to review. So. I can certainly try to reach out to LaRue, see if they would be willing to send me a demo sample or a media sample or something like that. Uh, but the information that I've had from LaRue's in the past, uh, Andy, who teaches classes with me, he had some LaRue stuff that he, no issues with. I know other guys who have had LaRue rifles come through classes over the years, the OBRs and things like that, and I, I have not seen issues with them. So they're a little heavy, you know, for some of the stuff, uh, especially when they were doing their, you know, quad rails and stuff, but they had some really beefy quad rails. And, you know, Mark LaRue, he's kind of a character. I met him at a match, uh, I don't even know how many years it's been. And he's definitely a character, but the guy makes really good barbecue as well. And actually I do have one bad thing to say about LaRue. The last few orders I've made, I have specifically asked for more Dillo dust, which is their seasoning, and I've not gotten it. So LaRue, if you ever do see this video, I do want more of the dust. It's, uh, it's just a really, really good seasoning. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I don't think you'd have really any issues. They make quality stuff, and I think their customer service is pretty good, at least it has been for me in the past. So yeah, I can certainly reach out though and see if we can add that to the list. Number eight. This is, I don't know who it's from, Nick? Yeah, it's from Nick. I have an Aero Precision Upper chambered in 308 with a 10 and a half inch barrel. I'm having issues with it not cycling. It's stove piping, barely ejecting the round, sometimes barely. When I fire a single round, the bolt will lock back in the empty position. Can you possibly help me? Brand new gun, 40 rounds through it. It's clean and lubed. Okay, so good, clean and lubed, that's great. I will be upfront with you, diagnosing guns over the internet is super tough to do. Just period, it's just super tough to do. When I used to do gunsmithing for a major sporting goods chain here in the Midwest. Uh, I was their kind of lead armor gunsmith and I'd get all these tech support calls and emails being like, hey, it's not doing this. I'll be like, you know, it's trying to go through troubleshooting and then they would send it in and it was something completely different because, you know, they weren't looking for what I was looking for. That being said, large frame ARs, 308, 65 Creedmoors, 260s, whatever, they're a completely different beast. A lot more energy there and there's a lot more things that make them tougher to diagnose. So here's what I would try. Number one, I don't know if you have an adjustable gas block or not. So I would make sure, first off, everything is tight and secure. Make sure your gas key on the carrier is tight. Make sure the gas block is secured properly so we're not having any leaking issues, things like that. I don't know 
if you've verified that the gas block is in alignment with the port, but that would also be something to check because if you're not getting enough energy, it's barely ejecting, then obviously we could have an issue. Otherwise, we also wanna look, just do a function check. Can the bolt carrier cycle smooth by hand? I've seen crappy receiver extensions or buffer tubes on the market where you just even cycle and you can feel kind of some binding. And it turned out the cheap receiver extension was kind of bent or canted a little bit. So where the carrier was kind of, you know, binding up in the receiver extension. So some of those things can uh, even be issues as well. The lower receiver, could be out of spec. I've seen that as well, causing, again, the receiver extension to be misaligned with the bolt carrier, so it's kind of jamming up in there. So look for wear inside there, too. That being said, your function check. Fire one, one round in the mag, fire it, see if it locks back. You said it is, but you also mentioned before that it's barely ejecting the rounds. So where is it ejecting? How far away? It should be a few feet away in a generally a repeatable pile. And ideally, if we were, you know, the barrel was 12 o'clock, that three, or four, three to four o'clock position. If not, we may have to adjust either the gas system, the buffer, you know, you can check out my, uh, which buffer weight video I did up here. The same principles would apply, but we wanna look for that. Cause here's the simplicity of it, is the energy, the gas has to overcome the mass, the weight of the bolt carrier, the energy of that spring and buffer system. We have to basically overcome that. In the meantime, we also have to unlock the gun and do a few other things under the hood that's all going on when you press the trigger. And it can be very frustrating when it doesn't work. So those are some things that I would try to check out. Otherwise, see if there is a competent gunsmith in your area that works on ARs. Don't just go to any old gunsmith, because here's the thing with gunsmiths, guys. Uh, <laughs> I've worked on a lot of guns that were worked on by other gunsmiths, particularly ARs especially when I was doing gunsmithing work for the company, like I mentioned before, I'd have all sorts of customers call me and be like, hey, my gunsmith says this thing is a turd. It's out of spec, whatever, whatever. Okay, here's a label, send it in. And then I would basically look at it and be like, man, never take your gun to that gunsmith again. And it turns out that gunsmith was very reputable when it came to duck hunting shotguns or whatever, but gunsmiths like money. They're capitalists, okay? Generally speaking, when you call a gunsmith, hey, do you work on this? Of course I do! Even though they've never worked on one before, they'll figure it out. A lot of times they can fix it, sometimes they can't. Now for me, I turn work away all the time. I don't work on things that I don't work on. That's just the way it is. I, I specialize in what I specialize. So try to find a gunsmith in your area if you can, that way you don't have to pay shipping and all this other stuff and see if they can diagnose it. Also, don't be afraid to ask your gunsmith for their armor certifications or what AR specific training they've had. I had a customer in uh, just two weeks ago, uh, did an upper build for him. And he said, he's like, so like, are you certified? Are you, like, what kind of training? I handed him my binder. I said, yep, there you go, man. And I keep a binder with all my certifications. I don't have an I love me wall behind me that has like all of my little tech certifications. Like when you go to the auto shop, some of those places do. I just have a binder every time I go to a class, I throw it in the binder and I give that to the customer. I say, yeah, look through that. So. Don't be afraid to reach out, see if you can find somebody local that might be able to help you first. Number nine, and our last question is from Paul. One, actually has two questions. I have a Bear Creek Arsenal 24 inch 308. Can I use a medium buffer tube and a 3.7 ounce 308 buffer in spring? You should be able to, again, uh, check out the video I linked to earlier about how to choose your buffer. You're gonna wanna do your function checks with it. You're gonna wanna see where it's ejecting. You're gonna wanna see how it's functioning. Uh, but yeah, also don't be afraid to reach out to the manufacturer of your barrel. Believe it or not, the barrel holds a lot of kind of the gateway to your gas because the barrel sets the gas length system, what type of tube you're using, and they also have the gas port, which again affects how much gas is going into the block and then into the carrier. So don't be afraid to reach out to the barrel company and say, hey, I'm building a gun. This is the ammo I wanna shoot. I'm using your barrel. What buffer and spring combination do you recommend? And a lot of times the barrel company will have a recommendation for you for a best practice, or they'll give you kind of a starting point. I think it might start to rain, so I gotta wrap this up. His other question, what are the politics of registering an SBR? Go to the ATF or local sheriff. Well, part of it depends on if you're doing a uh, trust or an individual, but it all has to go to the ATF. You all have to register with the ATF or every SBR has to register with the ATF, you have to pay your $200, and then you just simply have to notify your chief uh, law enforcement officer. So that could be your sheriff, your police chief. Uh, there used to be a list of other or approvals, but now it's 
you don't have to get approval from them anymore. You just give them a notification. So in that form one, or uh, if you're doing a transfer, if an already manufactured gun, it would be a form four. But in that form, there is a notification page. A copy gets sent to the Clio. So there's no politics. They can't deny you anymore. They can't refuse to sign anymore. That was an issue that they've fixed. So that is that. So I hope that helps with that question. Hopefully it's not too noisy. I think my neighbors back there are doing some wood processing or whatever today. So that's that. All right, here we go. First one, random number generator is number four. So number four and number seven. Number four and number seven are gonna get issues of UN 12 magazine. So number four is Dom and number seven is Tom. So I'm gonna give away two issues of UN 12 to you guys. So thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, you know, we're gonna do one more prize too. Generate. And number eight, that, was that really random? Well, yeah, it was. Number eight is Nick. So I'll send a prize to you as well from Rainier Arms. So we're giving away three things this, this episode, which is kind of cool. If you guys want to see your question on the show, the best way is to email me. The email address is shown below. It is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. I sincerely do appreciate your time. I hope these are helpful for you. Again, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You guys are like my inner circle. I feel like you guys uh, are some of the most loyal subscribers and fans that we have on Guns and Tactics, and I do appreciate you tuning in every month and submitting your questions. Spread the word. If you want to have your friends watch, that would be awesome. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.